In the previous video, templates were introduced and explained. Now it's time to take it to the next level. In this video, I'll walk you through the first steps of setting up our templates and start rendering out our content. So what's on the agenda? We'll start out with adding some basic HTML to the homepage template. Going a little further, I'll also introduce a few ways of rendering out specific data from our published content. Sounds pretty cool, right? Let's do it. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, our front end is currently blank. This right here is supposed to be our front page. Now, if we check the source code in the browser, we will see that there is absolutely nothing here. Of course, we would want it to be a bit more exciting than this, right? We'll do that now by adding some basic HTML markup to the homepage template. So we'll go back to the back office here and open our front page template from here. Yes, we already have a bit of code in here. It's generated automatically and it defines which model to use for this particular template view. In this case, the model we're using is homepage, which is the document type we created in the previous chapter. Below, we have a razor code block. Don't worry too much about this at the top here for now. It'll be covered in a later video. For now, we'll be adding code under the razor code block. All right, let's start simple and add a paragraph with some text. Let's go with hello world. All right, we will click save here to save the template. Now, if we go back to the front end and reload, we should see our HTML markup reflect here on the front end. Now, if we check the source code again, yes, we, you can see we're slowly starting to build up our front page. So what's really great about this is that you have full control over the output. Now, let me just head back to the back of this here and add a bit more HTML to our template. So I'll highlight this and paste in a snippet here. There we go. Let's save and head to the front end and reload one more time. There we go. Now it's starting to look a bit more like a front page, right? But instead of just adding these static values, what we really want is to use the data from our content section. We want to output the data that our content editors will be creating. So for that, let's go back to our front page and go to the content menu. I've added some content to our properties here. Now let's see how we can output this on the front end. So let's open our template menu once more. All right, we'll start by populating the promo text placeholder here. I will just crop it and move it here under the header. There we go. So let's highlight the text here as this is the static text that we want to replace with dynamic text. So we'll go ahead and click on the insert dialog here. As you can see, there's a bunch of different options. In this video here, we're interested in the value option. So if we click on that, it'll give us some more options. So first up, we'll need to pick which property or field we want to display. So from the drop down here, you can see we have a bunch of different fields to choose between. There are the standard and default fields. And then we also have the fields that we've created based on our properties. So what we wanted for this particular text is the promo text. So we'll select that one. And you can see that this dialog generates a code snippet for us down here. This is what will be added to our template once we hit submit. We can add a few fallbacks here, like a default value and a fallback to the value used on the parent node if one exists. We won't configure any of that now, as I'll cover that in a later video for now. We'll just go ahead and hit submit. Now you can see that the snippet is added to our template. So instead of the placeholder text we had here, it now says add model.value and then the alias of our property. Now the add sign starts the razor code. Model defines the context we're in, that being the homepage document type in this case. And then we use value to define the data we want rendered. Now let's go ahead and save the template and reload the front end once more. As you can see, the text from our front end, welcome to the templates chapter on our CV, is now rendered here instead of the placeholder text. Now, if we wanted to update this text, we simply go back to the content node here in the content menu and locate the property up here. And then we could make some changes to it, like this is a change. Then we hit save and publish. And this change will now be reflected on our front end once we reload. There we go. So this is starting to look the part. Now let's output some more fields on the template. 
go back and find the template again. So you do not always need to use the insert dialog up here. Sometimes it might be faster to just type it out yourself. Let's do that for the header up here. So we'll remove the placeholder text and we'll say at model dot. And here we'll simply type name. So this should now output the name of our content item. Let's refresh to check. Super, we now have the name of our page up here. So did you notice any difference between the two methods I used here? Let's take a closer look. So back in the template. The first one I added using the insert dialog is using the content that's available from the content cache. That's why we're using value. The other snippet I use for the the name of the page, these uses the model from the current context, which is currently home page. It's doing the model.value behind the scenes, and we only need to use model and then the alias of the property. Now I've showed you two ways of rendering out our data. Make sure you're consistent as to which of these two methods you use, just to avoid any confusion for other people who might need to work with the same piece of code. For our tutorial here, we'll continue to use the content cache approach, that being model.value. So what we've rendered out here so far have been pretty basic text fields. You might be wondering if it's just as simple to render out something like an image in the front end. Well, I'll have to be honest and say, not quite. But don't worry, we've got you covered. In our documentation, you can find detailed instructions on how to render data from each of the available property editors in Obraco. Now let's see how that works. So we'll close down the template here and go to our content menu. So we have a media picker here as the promo image. Let's first of all pick a, an image. So we'll click on the plus here. This will open our media library and we'll just pick the first image here. Select, and there we go. Now we want this rendered out on our front end, right? So rendering out images isn't as simple as rendering out the more simple text fields here. So we'll start by heading over to our documentation which, li which lives here on, uh, on our. And I've located here an article called Built-in Umbraco Property Editors. These are the ones we've been working with in the previous chapters about document types. As you can see, there is an article for every single property editor in Umbraco. Now, let's see if we can find one for the media picker. We have it here. So this article contains some different information about the media picker. First, we get an overview of the data type definition and what options we have to configure it. Then there are a few examples of when the property is used on content. And finally, here at the bottom, we have some code snippets. There's one for when you have multiple enabled and one for multiple disabled. So this means that on the media picker, you can define if it should be possible to pick multiple media items or only a single media item. So in order to check how our media picker is defined, let's head back to the back office, open the document type here. Oh, we will just need to save our changes first, of course. There we go. Let's open the document type and click on the cogwheel here next to the promo image property and next to the media picker as well. So the pick multiple item isn't checked, which means that it's only possible to pick a single media item with this media picker. All right, let's submit this again. Save and close. And head back to the documentation. So that means that for our site here, we need to use this snippet. So I'll just go ahead and copy the whole thing. There we are. And let's head back to the back office and open our template. All right. And we want the image to be placed here under our promo text. So I'll just make some room for it and paste in the snippet, clean it up a bit. There we go. So this code that we've pasted in now is generic and doesn't really match our aliases are set up yet. So we'll need to make some changes for it to show our image. First of all, we will need to pick the correct alias here, which I believe is promo image. All right, and then we want to get rid of the paragraph here. Oh, let's clean it up a bit. And this here is the part where our image is being rendered out. All right, I think that was it. Let's uh, save the template and go ahead and refresh our front end once again. I'll just close down the source code here. All right, there's our image, great. 
Now, when you're going to expand your website, you're most likely going to be using some of the more advanced property editors that Umbraco ships with. In order to render out data from these properties, I highly recommend keeping the documentation close at hand. As mentioned before, in here in the documentation, you can find articles and detailed code snippets for each of the properties that Umbraco ships with. Each of the articles provides examples and code snippets that you can take and use on your site, just like we did with the media picker just now. I'll make sure to put a link to, to this article here and in the below this video. And I think that was it for this video. Now you know the basics about setting up a template. Let's do a quick review before moving on. We saw how you can use HTML to render static values and Razor to render data from our content. Depending on the context, you can choose either of the two to render a field, model.value and then the property alias, which uses the content cache, or you can use model.property alias, which uses the model in the current context. Use the documentation on our for detailed instructions on how to render out more complex data like we did with the media picker in this video. And that was it. In the next video, I'll introduce you to the concept of master templates. See you there.